the color page in DaVinci Resolve. It's big, it's bad, it's scary. It beat me up in a Denny's parking lot that one time. And it's also a massive pull for Resolve and a giant reason tons of people start experimenting in Resolve at all. I know it was for me. But the broader world of color grading and color correction is a science and an art and it's complicated and confusing and scary but kind of really exciting and there is so much amazing info out there that sometimes it can be hard to know exactly where to start or if you don't want to dive into the world of color grading completely uh, sometimes it can be hard to know just how to cover your bases with basic color controls so in this video i'm basically going to tell you what i would tell anyone that was sitting next to me at a desk and i just had like 10 minutes i don't know how long it will take but about 10 minutes to go over the most important color tools, and especially for people who might have a little bit of an understanding coming from another software, where some of the most common color tools are. And then I also wanna go over some of the small color tips and tricks I know that could save uh, the right person in the right situation a whole lot of time. But first, I have to say, I am not a colorist. Yes, I was drawn to Resolve at first because of color, and I thought I would get a lot more in it, but then, hey, I found the Fusion page and, and that distracted me a bit. So I will say I want this video to be very, very helpful and useful, especially to new users in Resolve. But if you are really interested in diving deep into color, the two places I would direct you to first and foremost are Darren Mostyn and Cullen Kelly. They're both professionals running amazing channels, getting deep into the stuff that kind of scares me a little bit. And if one day I am ready to just really go ham and dive into color, that is where I will be headed. But with that, let's hop into Resolve. I have a timeline here with a few miscellaneous clips, but we're gonna go and jump right over to the color page and see what we got. I'm not gonna go into a super in-depth walkthrough of the UI, but obviously you have your main viewer, this nodes panel over here, and then you can click along to certain clips to apply your grade. Now this node tree window is one that you can go very into depth and like process your grade uh, in very technical ways. But since we're keeping things basic, the only thing I think I wanna say here is that even though you can stack lots of effects and adjustments on one node, even if you are adjusting them um, in a line, you can add a serial node by clicking Alt S on a bare bones level if you just handle different kinds of effect like contrast or color work or that stuff on different nodes that could make it really easy um, to toggle them on and off independently and see what you like and then also go and make specific changes if you ever want to clear out a node you can just clear out uh, one node that's doing a certain kind of effect all that saying try to avoid the very beginner mistake of piling everything on one node and then you don't like something so you just have to wipe it and start over but hey let's talk basics contrast saturation brightness okay what I want to direct your attention down to is um, in this bar of all these different panels here, you want this first circle one, and that is your primaries color wheel tab. And it's easy to be distracted by these actual color wheels, uh, but above and below that, you also have these options. Here, if I look through some of these, you can see uh, at the top, we have this option for contrast. I can always pull that up or down. And one of the options beneath that is saturation, if I want to pull those colors up. Now, when we start talking about brightness, that's where um, you really have to open up your thinking a little bit because we don't just have uh, like one slider for brightness here in the center where you have these color wheels yes they are color wheels and define color but also by category you have lift gamma and gain which as i understand it loosely correlates to different brightness values in your scene so lift will be the darker areas gamma more middle gain highlights although there is some overlap in those to kind of help blend them together but then you also have this offset which is a little more general over your image so if i come to this uh, slider bar at the bottom, I can generally pull all of it up or down, where otherwise, if I just grab these gains and push those, you'd see it really affects those bright areas. Lift, if I push that down, it really crushes the darker areas of my screen, which also adds contrast. You can play around here for ages, but if you know, hey, you just want a little bit of contrast, a little bit of saturation, and then generally push your brightness up or down, here's where you want to go. Now, a lot of people could have stumbled onto that at least by themselves poking around, but I want to uh, pivot into some more tips and tricks I really like that some beginners might not know about. I have several different video clips here from a fast video I did, and if I come in here and just do something like, yeah, contrast, saturation, make something a little more presentable, even though not Great, yeah, don't love it. Anyway, here's what I wanna show off. I have a simple grade here, and if I just right click in my viewer, I have a grab still option. And if I click that, it will add it here into my gallery. And I added it into a new folder for this project, but underneath that we also have power grades. 
And these, I have almost never cleared mine out. But if you have this window open when you grab a still, it will save that. And this kind of like power bins on the edit page, you'll be able to open and reference across projects. Now we have a grade here. And even though it is just a still, if I go to a different clip, I can right click on that still and go to apply grade. And it will add any number of nodes I had in that grade to the new clip. But check this out as well. If I have any clip selected here and I middle click on another clip, it will copy the grade from that clip. I'm actually going to come in and reset both of these grades to show off something really, really cool. Now you see I have all these clips of me just sitting at the desk and I can actually select all of those. I'm going to select one and then shift hold. Now I have all of those collected and I can right click and we have some options up here, add into current group, new group, uh, remove from group. And if I have multiple groups, you can select which group. I'm going to add a current group since I don't currently have one acted. And look, it added a little icon underneath each of those clips. And now in our no viewer here, you see it says clip at the top. If I drag that down, you see, hey, we have new options, group pre-clip and group post clip. I can just come to group pre-clip. And then now I have one node viewer here. But if I select that and right click and apply that grade, hey, these updated, I have now applied that grade to each of these clips. So this is pretty much my workflow whenever I'm editing one of these videos. I have a color grade, I have pretty set, my lighting is pretty stable. So I just bring all my clips in, make them a group, uh, go to my power grades, add that tweak if I need to, and I, my color is, is done. <laughs> of course, I am doing YouTube tutorials sitting in the same place talking to the camera. But this feature is really good. Like anytime you're able to consolidate work, or if you have a general grade, you are applying to a group of clips, but you need to fine tune each of those, you can still hop back to clip at any time. And you see there is no grade at all on this node tree. So you tweak it so all the clips fit much better together. It's a really powerful feature. You want some more stuff? Let's talk about the fastest way to blur anything in DaVinci Resolve. Of course, I do lots on the Fusion page, but there are some things that I would still absolutely go to the color page to do, like simple blurring out of someone's face. Uh, I'm going to come to this second clip, which I just, yeah, am moving around a little bit. But what happens if this is some other situation where I just want to blur or pixelate this person's face? I have my one node selected. I'm going to hop over here to this little window tab. And here we have all of these power windows. Super cool. There's so much stuff here as well. But I'm going to click this circle. You see, hey, I can move that to my face. And then I will click one tab over to the tracking tab. That window is selected. I'm in the middle of my clip. So I'm gonna click this button to track forward and backwards. I, I did trim a little clip. So we weren't dealing with quite so much time, but I will uh, run that track again. You see it is uh, sticking pretty well to my face as I just bounce around a little bit. It is interesting since my face pivots a little bit, it sort of like moves with that. But once that track is done, I can make sure my little effects tab over here is open and I'm gonna drag on mosaic blur and boom, it's pixelated. You can change the density with this pixel frequency option. And if I just play back through that, then yeah, even when I bounce back and forth a little bit, that mask stays. And hey, I can come in after effect, go back to window and increase that size a little bit and it will still keep that tracked motion. And we did that for this pixelation effect, but you can use these power windows and tracking for any adjustment you have on a node. I could do the same effect if I just wanted to increase or decrease the contrast on my face, or if I needed to like track a logo to adjust in any other way. If I had a really busy scene, I could use color and brightness to strategically uh, brighten or darken some areas to drive viewer attention. This gets wild uh, pretty quick, but the basics aren't that unapproachable. For anyone watching that does have a really good understanding of the color page, I know this video was beyond basics, but I wanted to get something out there. I know there are amazing color resources, but I haven't talked a lot about color on this channel. And for viewers who want to start dipping their toes in the color pool, hopefully this equips you just enough to start jumping in and fiddling around a little bit. If nothing else, you know now where contrast and saturation are. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.